What's up, everybody? It's Chris. I'm here with Dr. Michael Greger. You may have seen my interview with him before. Dr. Greger is the founder of nutritionfacts.org, one of the best websites on the planet for nutrition information. A personal favorite of mine. He's the author of How Not to Die, which, again, don't, don't let your head get too big here, but I think it is one of the best books, if not the best book, on nutritional science ever written. That's a big claim. Big claim. But um, that is what I tell people when you're not around. All right. Well, I'm, I, I tend to agree, but I'm not disinterested. In the, uh... <laughs> I have your permission to extol Please. the book. Please. Oh, yeah, go crazy. <laughs> so I will link to, the, to that book in the show notes. But Dr. Gregor has a new book called How Not to Die It. And um, this is also a tome. I mean, it's a massive volume of research, and I would love for you to talk about, um, you told your story last time we did the interview, how you got into nutritional science and became a, uh, an MD focused on nutrition, so we don't have to revisit that, but I'd love to just dig right into um, what prompted you to write this book, mm. and then uh, some of the surprises mm. that you learned, maybe things yeah. that you, assumptions you had that mm -hmm. were completely overturned yeah. by yeah, yeah, yeah. dietary re research. Hey, you know, with so much nutritional noise and nonsense these days, I just wanted there to finally be an evidence-based diet book. And mm -hmm. to that end, uh, you know, I cite literally thousands of studies digging up every possible tip, trick, tweak, technique proven to accelerate the loss of body fat, to give people you know, every possible advantage and basically build the optimum weight loss solution from the ground up. Um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of surprises, well, you know, in, in medical school we're taught that a you know, calorie is a calorie. A calorie from one source is just as fattening as a calorie from any other, but it turns out there's a trope broadcast by the food industry really to absolve itself of culpability. Coca-Cola even put an ad out there to emphasize this, what they call one simple common sense fact. But um, it's not true, and I use the, um, well, in the, you know, so the, the, the two past chairs of uh, Harvard's nutrition department talk about the central argument from industry that the overconsumption of calories from carrots would have the same effect on calorie balance as the overconsumption of calories from soda. <laughs> so I talk course. about the you know Coca Cola versus you know carrots, and yeah, I mean in a laboratory setting, you know the 240 calories uh, of carrots would be about 10 carrots. It would have the same effect on, on calorie balance as the you know 240 calories in a bottle of Coke. But you know that uh, you know that really falls flat on its face out in the real world, right? Taking less than a a minute to chug down those liquid candy calories, whereas it would take more than two and a half hours of constant chewing to get through that many carrots. It's actually been tested. They sat down, <laughs> people. And, and how many carrots was it? So that's like five cups of carrots. And so, oh, man. Yeah. Um, you know, people might not even be able to fit them all in their stomach, right? I mean, in a lab, a calorie is a calorie, but in life, really far from it. Yeah, and when you, I mean, that is the difference between the, this eating whole foods that have a lot of bulk and volume that right. fill you up yeah. and liquid calories that people just siphon through their bodies mm -hmm. and you know pack on 50, 100, 200 extra pounds and yet it's the same according well, I mean, to yeah, them yeah yeah ridiculous <laughs> right. yeah 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 i mean so that i mean so that was but it turns out even <laughs> if we um, absorb the same number of calories um, eat the same number of calories uh, different foods can have different effects um, even if we eat the same food at different times or in different meal distribution or after a different amount of sleep can result in a different depositing of body fat on the body. So it's not just what you eat, but how and when. That was really fascinating to me. Talk about, you Talk know, the, about that. I'd love the, for you um, to. So chronobiology, this whole new, I mean, it's not a new specialty, new to me. Um, uh, it's one of the biggest chapters in the book where, you know, I'd long known about chronotherapeutics where timing of chemotherapy, for example, makes yes. a difference in terms of side effects, in terms of efficacy. The exact same dose, the exact same drug given at a different time of day can have different effects. Like, it's wild. Yeah. So maybe we should not be surprised that there's such thing as chronoprevention, that the timing of meals and exercise and um, stress management can... Uh, also um, uh, differentially affect us. And so it turns out calories eaten in the morning are less fattening than the exact same calories eaten at night. The same snack eaten at night 
Um, uh, deposits more body fat in the body than the exact same night eaten early in the day. The fewer calories after um, uh, after uh, sundown, the better. Um, we really should try to shift our calories towards the morning because they just don't count as much. This has implications in blood sugars and all sorts of things. Just really remarkable. In fact, you, know, you randomize people to 2,000 calories in the morning and the exact same 2,000 calories in the evening um, as a single meal just as an experimental trial, and the morning group loses weight and the evening group gains weight. I mean, it's the exact same number of calories, exact same food. Exact I mean, same meal. Remarkable. And didn't, um, I, I've seen your video on this, and didn't you, uh, is it roughly true that the insulin response is double oh, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m.? Unbelievable. On the same meal. Right, so the exact same <coughs> food can have a significantly higher blood sugar spike. Um, so you may test normal in the morning, but be pre-diabetic in the evening, um, just because your ability to control blood sugars declines as uh, as uh, time gets late. So we, late, late eating has lots of negative effects. Why do they think that happens? Like why oh, does oh, it it's because of our circadian rhythms. Okay. Um, and so that is the most, uh, our circadian system, our 24-ish uh, hour system, is, uh, is the major controller of gene expression in the body. Um, so almost every process you can name, from body temperature to stress hormones, blood pressure, um, cycles throughout the day. Um, and we were just, and so, and there's all sorts of really interesting mechanisms that go into that, but that's the base, that's the basal understanding. It's not just activity. It's not just like, well, you know, eating, you just woke up or eating right before you go to bed it has nothing to do with that. You can do this so-called chrono disruption studies where you stick people in a basement under dim, constant light, feed them at irregular times. Um, and so they have <laughs> no fun. idea. And, and so you totally screw them up. Uh, they have no idea what time it is, and then you can go in there and have them exercise at at uh, at, at night and stay up during the day. Doesn't matter; it still sticks in that cycle. Their body knows, and uh, and so it's r independent of the activity. It's the circadian rhythm. That's um, yeah, it, it's incredibly fascinating. And you um, talk about intermittent fasting mm. in the book, and there's been a lot of studies on intermittent fasting, and. Um, and this lines up with the, uh, so years ago I interviewed Dr. Walter Longo, oh, and yeah. Walter said something to me. He said, uh, don't skip breakfast, mm. right? He said, people who skip breakfast have worse health. Yes. And I was like, really? This is, okay, I'm, this is new information. Mm. Because a lot of people are skipping breakfast. Yeah, they're right. intermittent fasting. They're eating lunch and dinner, whatever. Mm. And then your book comes out, and you start talking about this circadian rhythm situation mm. and the doubling of... Uh, blood sugar from eating at night. It's like, oh, wow, okay, it's yeah. starting to click. So were there other things that you learned uh, that you talk about in the book about intermittent fasting, strategies, oh, yeah, or yeah, yeah. time time restricted eating strategies that seem to be the most beneficial? Yeah, so the way you do it is early time restricted feeding. So, um, you know, so time restricted eating is, you know, cutting your daily eating window to 12 hours or less. I say fasting half the time. Yep. But what was really interesting when I dived into this literature is some studies, so it's great for you. Other studies, apparently the same amount of, you know, same window, so it's terrible for you. Hmm. It's so weird to see this kind of disparate results in literature. Same biomarker, same general populations of folks, and it turns out it was the timing of the window. The, all mm. the early time restricted feeding showing show these remarkable benefits beyond just the chronobiological benefits of eating earlier, but the restriction. Whereas the evening, the chronobiological adverse effects of eating late, skipping breakfast, um, were such that they overwhelmed the benefits of the time restricted feeding. They actually had adverse effects overall. And so, if you're going to skip any meal, it should be skipping dinner, not breakfast. And this is pretty doable, by the way. I mean, it's pretty easy for someone to eat a breakfast at 6 or 7 a.m. and be done eating by 6 or 7 p.m. I mean, that's the 12-hour window, There you right? go. There you go. I mean, so yeah. even if they aren't skipping dinner, right, right. right? I encourage people, yeah, stop eating after 7. Okay, yeah. yep. Now, what about the shorter the shorter eating windows? Like, I know some folks are, are you know, doing 8-hour feeding windows. I mean, is there any... Did you find anything in the literature that's made you think, wow, this is even better than 12 hours. So there, there is a benefit to the time restricted feeding. We don't, we don't, the data isn't granular enough to find out what's the optimal window. Okay. Um, but, um, so they all show a remarkable benefits and we have yet to tease out exactly the, the optimal amount. But we do know the timing. Got and it. And we do know the window. 
Um, any other surprises? Oh my God, the whole book was. I mean, I learned. People don't realize that I learned as much as anybody else yeah, when I write yeah. these books. I mean, if I knew it all, I wouldn't have to do all the research. I mean, there's a half million papers in the scientific literature on obesity with 100 new ones published every day. Like, I didn't, you know, I wouldn't talk about this in medical school. Um, and so, yeah, it was starting from scratch, really. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it was all just absolutely fascinating. All these, like, spices like proven in placebo control randomized control trials where you know uh, you can pack it into a little capsule these foods are so potent and pit it against you know head to head against sugar pill placebos and prove that you can accelerate loss of body fat regardless of what you eat the rest of the time it's just remarkable and why haven't i heard about this because you know it comes out to be like two cents a day no one's gonna you know you're not gonna thrill your stockholder selling something you can't patent that just costs three cents a day so that's why we don't hear about the benefits of ground ginger and garlic powder and black cumin and all these other things um, and it's really, but the data is there, mm -hmm. but you just never hear about it. And so that's really, how I see my role in the world is taking this mountain of data that already exists out there, just translating and getting it out there. I mean, new new drug comes out, new medical procedure. You, of course, you're going to hear about it because there's a corporate machine driving its promotion, right? There'll be ads on TV. You know, people will hear about it. Yeah. But when you know some study comes out that says you know broccoli does something, it just it just disappears. So the studies are out there. They just never see the light of day. Uh, I think most of my audience understands the incentives or disincentives for uh, studies like that to never go anywhere, right? There's no money in broccoli and cauliflower and blueberries. Mm. Um, and, uh, but it is surprising. I, it's Even though there's no incentive, it's still surprising because I think we all want to believe the best about people mm. and we all feel like, gosh, if we learn something great, Everyone really would want everyone to know about it, right? right. Well, you can want, I mean, you can want someone to know about it, and you can stand up on a soapbox on the street corner and tell as many people as you can about it, but uh, you're not going to be, if you can't buy the airways, you know, how, you know, then the masses aren't going to hear about it. And the prescription drug companies are the second largest advertiser on TV, right? Cars are number one, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Junk food and far big pharma are way up there. Yeah. <laughs> so um, when uh, oh, y so you mentioned three spices: ginger, garlic, black cumin. No, oh, regular cumin works too. And it's cumin, an appetite suppressant. Any yeah. other uh, like top performers in the just helping with weight? Well, loss? so vinegar. You know, two teaspoons of vinegar with each meal it activates an enzyme called AMPK, which uh, accelerates the loss of body fat and. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's just remarkable benefits, and they this is even proven in placebo-controlled studies where they compared one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar a day in a beverage, and compared to a placebo beverage with a different kind of acid, didn't have any actual vinegar. Then you use CT scanning and, and precisely measure body fat significantly decrease in body fat in the vinegar group and not the fake vinegar group. No one knew until the code was broken at the end. I mean, remarkable studies like this, but again, you never hear about it. So I was so excited to bring it out to the world. Um, Plant-based nutrition is your focus? No. No. Evidence-based nutrition is my focus. It happens to be plant-based because that's what the evidence is. Got it. It's like, am I, you know, it's like, you know, the, the American Lung Association doctors are accused of being anti-smoking. They're not anti, they're just pro-lung. Yeah, <laughs> they're yeah, just yeah. pro-health. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it just so happens smoking isn't good for your lungs. Yep. And the, the overwhelming majority of evidence is pointing to a plant-based diet uh, for optimal health. Obviously, that's what I adopted and still follow, and it's been 16 years. Um, and weight loss is important, not just because we want to look good on the beach. It's important because obesity is the second leading cause of cancer. And so, like, for my audience, about half my audience are cancer patients, and the other half are, are really into prevention because they've seen their mom, their dad, brother, mm. sister, you know, sometimes children mm. go through, suffer and die. Friends go through, suffer and die. And um, and so, uh, like, this is just so important. So it's sort of a secondary mission for me is to mm. help people get back to a healthy body weight. One thing that I learned um, was that there was a study on cancer patients. I don't want to, I don't want to, butcher the the summary but they found that if just because they had a normal BMI didn't lower their risk because uh, you can have a normal BMI and still be overweight mm. right yeah and so um, that gets a little tricky right 
Well, no, that's why you need, it's critical to it's have... It's like the belly fat, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right? it's critical to have, to also, in addition to BMI, have some measure of of the visceral fat. That's the fat underneath your abdominal musculature, deep inside, infiltrating your organs, coiled around your organs. That's the dangerous fat. It's not the superficial flab. Um, and so that's why the current recommendation is both for BMI, body weight, plus some measure of, of uh, abdominal obesity. Typically, it's abdominal circumference. So your doctor should be putting a, a, a measuring tape around your waist. Um, uh, and, and, and so it's critical to get both. And what you want is you want an abdominal circumference less than half your height. Less than half your height. Yeah, I've seen some folks, uh, you know, walking around with, uh, it's about equal, yeah. about as wide as they are tall. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that's concerning. It's not a good, it's not a good thing. <laughs> So how has this changed the way you eat at all? Has your research on diet, I mean, you're a slim guy, so you're not struggling with weight or weight loss, um, but has it changed the way that you, you eat at all in the dietary, I mean, in your dietary research? Oh, well, oh, absolutely. I mean, everything I read, I mean, uh, you know, oh, you all of a sudden, <laughs> I gotta do, I gotta eat more parsley, I like eating more parsley. Oh, all of a sudden I gotta cut this out, okay, right? So, I mean, there are lots of big changes. So, for example, from How Not to Die, I tell people, that's the problem with doing books, it's harder to change, you know, as opposed to videos, you can just take down the video, put yeah. up a new video. Um, so in the original How Not to Die, I tell people, you know, toast your walnuts, toast your sesame seeds, okay. so much more delicious, fragrant, delicious, ah, oh, that's the way I make pesto, blah, blah, blah. And doesn't it release some nutrients? Well, no, it's not that, it's okay. the, it creates these uh, advanced glycation end products. When you expose high fat, high protein foods, to, uh, to high enough temperatures, they produce these glycotoxins, which are no good for you. And typically, and so I actually talk about glycotoxins in the book, and the top 20 sources like chicken McNuggets and broiled hot dogs, and they're all, you know, what you'd expect. But it turns out, I uh, learned later, oh, they put nuts to the test, and it, well, yeah, duh, high fat protein, you suppose them to the same temperatures, yeah, they create these toxins. So now I encourage people to eat raw nuts and seeds, nut butters, so that was, that was a big change for me. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, I mean, those kind of things where, you know, every day. I mean, that's where the Daily Dozen came from. Right. My Daily Dozen checklist of all the healthiest of healthy foods. I encourage people to fit into their daily routine. I, I mean, it started as little on the whiteboard check boxes on my fridge because I was like, you know, I'd be eating. I'm like, you know, hey, I read in some new study about how amazing legumes <laughs> are for you. Yeah. Like beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils. I'm like, when's the last time I ate some? You know, it's like, oh my God, they, I, of course they're so good for me. But I just get like reminded by something. It's like, oh, I got to remember. Okay, I'm going to remember to eat beans sometime today, you know. Yeah. And then, oh, I gotta eat greens. Oh, I gotta eat berries. Oh, I gotta eat corn teaspoon turmeric. Oh, I gotta eat a tablespoon of ground flax. And so that was finally. So I was <laughs> using it for myself. Now it's kind of second nature, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's like you know, oh, I would look down a dish. How can I add nutrition, make this healthier? I can add beans. I can add greens. I can, you know, always I'm always thinking. But that's how it originally came out. It was my personal like, I get, there's so much great stuff out there. You know, I wanted to good opportunity to plug yeah. the app because there's oh, a daily dozen app free on iPhone and Android. Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen, and it's now been updated to reflect the new book too so you can s toggle over weight loss mode okay if you're not just concerned about preventing arresting or reversing chronic disease toggle over weight loss and then it'll have the 21 tweaks on there as well which are all these kind of uh, weight loss boosters regardless of what you eat the rest of the time like um, to, the time like restricted the, like and the, the herbs. vinegar yeah, yeah all that vinegar. stuff yeah yeah, this is a great app because it's it, it's literally a daily checklist to help you make sure you're getting enough servings of greens, fruit, legumes, things like that. Right, right. And it's just trying to inspire day. people yeah. to include some of the healthiest foods. Well, I mean, everybody's tracking everything these days, right? And so, like, it's the perfect time no, to I'm have so this, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Um, I know in my audience, there's just a lot of people that are really, really focused and... Um, they're just hardcore, man. Awesome. You know, they're hardcore. I love it. Uh, well, we're talking about cancer here. Yeah. Right? If there's anything to be hardcore about, is the health and well being of yourself and your family. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, the doctor, well, is it called Dr. Gregor's or Nutrition Facts Daily Dozen? No, it's Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen. Okay. Yeah. Look it up on the iTunes store, Android. Yeah, good. Um, you mentioned, uh, yeah, changing everything and like every time you read something new. I, I'm the same way, right? Yeah, yeah. It reads something they're like, oh my gosh, I, I, I need more nutritional yeast in my life right, or whatever. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, did, um, were there any other things that you, um, oh, no, here's a good question. I'd love for you to talk about the difference between raw and cooked food and which yeah. foods are really best consumed raw. Mm. Uh, fruit's kind of obvious, but you know, maybe in the veggie mm. and other world, uh, raw versus cooked. 
Yeah, so... Um, and I know uh, a variety of both goes Yeah, too, so but. the bottom line, um, and boy, we can get to go deep in the details, but the bottom line is we should consume our vegetables in whichever way will get us to eat the most vegetables. If you like steamed broccoli, eat steamed broccoli. If you like raw broccoli, eat raw broccoli. Whatever's going to get you to eat more broccoli. Period. Got period. It. Everything else is window dressing. Yep. But... I'm sure you got some window dressing folks, right? Yes. Who wants to know the details, right? Yes, okay, yes. <laughs> but that's the bottom line before we get into any of the weeds, right? Whichever, so for example, uh, so there's some, uh, you know, heat sensitive nutrients like vitamin C and folate. And so uh, microwave and broccoli, two minutes, for example, um, uh, cuts down vitamin C content by about 15%, right? And so, but if you like, uh, but if you like, you know, steamed broccoli, if you like cooked broccoli, then it's fine. Instead of eating five florets of, of, of raw broccoli, you eat six florets of microwave broccoli. Get all the same, right? I mean, so it's like, we're just talking about a little bit, but if you're like, you are completely agnostic as mm -hmm. to whether you like raw broccoli or steamed broccoli, okay, fine, raw broccoli's better, right? But, yep. by, but by small amounts, people have the sense that cooking like destroys the nutrition. And in fact, there are some nutrients become more absorbable upon cooking. You have more beta carotene in your bloodstream eating cooked carrots mm. than raw carrots. More of this cancer-fighting lycopene, the red pigment in tomatoes, in processed tomato products, in tomato sauce, tomato paste, rather than the raw tomatoes. Um, you actually absorb more into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And so cook, uh, cooked tomatoes kind of fall in that category too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I encourage people to eat a combination of raw and cooked foods. Um, but I mean, what we can learn from the raw food movements is this big salads. Oh yeah. my God. I mean, these people eat the, you know, so that, I got these like me, man. mixing yeah. bowls, you know, oh yeah. <laughs> um, I mean that, and so that's a great, I mean, right. You can yeah. pound, you know, pound and lots of stuff, but you can add canned beans and you know, you know, um, and other, you know, cooked foods to that. Um, you know, not throw some nuts in season. There's some food. Oh my God. That's, and so, yeah. So if there's anything raw food has told us, taught us having these big cells, like choosing a, as like a meal, a steady yeah. meal for the day. And you can of course mix it up with different, but, oh, that's a great, that's a great meal. So the raw foodists were the first people I found when I was diagnosed with cancer. And, uh, and I kind of tried to mess around with raw recipes and mm. they're complicated and it was mm. really frustrating. And I, I just kind of came to this conclusion that like, I need to get as much produce in my body oh, I as love I it. can. I love it. And the only way I can do that, and the simplest way, the most sustainable, like manageable way is to make these giant salads. Mm. So oh, great. I had no science, man. There was no science helping me at this point. Well, okay? There was yeah. no nutrition facts. There was no Dr. Greger's books. Like this is 2004. Mm. I don't think you had any books in 2004. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but broccoli, Dude. cauliflower, kale, cabbage, oh, onions, mushrooms. Super. Oh, I love it. I love it. Lentils, like you know, uh, sprouted mung beans, right. cayenne pepper, garlic. Whoa, whoa. Uh, sauerkraut. You make me hungry. Yeah, like red and green peppers. I mean, like I mean, every vegetable you almost. Can think of. Yeah, I know. Beautiful. And, um, Beautiful. And then a little apple cider vinegar okay. and a little bit of olive oil. I was doing an olive vinegar okay. thing. And even curry powder. Oh. And man, it's just a wild. Like, oh my God. You got the sauerkraut and the curry powder. Oh yeah, and like different the garlic. Every bite is different with the different textures. And, oh, and yeah. apple cider vinegar. It was great. We did it. And so I, I made this concoction and I was like, well, this is great. This is delicious. And so I ate that every single day. I love it. I love lunch it. Lunch oh and God. dinner. I love it. Wow. Hardcore. Every day. Hardcore. For years. And you, wow, fitting in all sorts of really good stuff. Like cruciferous, the alien family vegetables. Great. Yeah. yeah. So that was it. Like that, that and awesome. I was I was also juicing and making fresh carrot and beet juice and things like that. But like that was my those are my two staple meals Woo. every single day. And then fruit working in some fresh berries and fruit smoothies and stuff. But yeah. um like, you know, operating on very little information, a few raw foodists, a few cancer survivors and some natural health experts. Yeah. Just going from book to book and oh, yeah. some tapes and v VHS tapes oh, and stuff, right? going, Betamax. <laughs> yeah. So just going from that stuff, like using that, and, and I was like, this is, it, this is, I'm going to overdose on nutrition, right? Uh -huh. This is, like, this is the goal. If I'm not doing chemo, I've got to be as, just right. as, like, hardcore, massive action as I wow, can. Oh, cool. So, um, and it helped me get well. That's awesome. And so that's that's what we, I'm still encouraging people to do. Like eat, just eat a ridiculous amount. And that was about 15 to 20 servings of I vegetables. I love it. I love day, it. I love it. Right with oh the juices and everything. Now, have you seen? I know there's a study, or not a study. I'm uh, maybe a newer consensus where they're saying now 10 servings of vegetables a day is is optimal as opposed to it used to be five. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, technically, I mean, the official recommendation nine to 13. 
9 to 13. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, okay. The, yeah. yeah. I'm mean, the official kind of, you know, dietary guidelines. That's great. Because I last the, the last thing I had seen was, you know, something about 10, which mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's great. That's more than, better than 5. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But 13 is, yeah, that's getting close to what I was doing and still still do. Great. Pound Keep it up. In. Yeah. Keep it up. <laughs> I, I wish I could find that in airport food courts. Yeah. Good luck. You can get a you can get a bunch of bananas. Six bananas, uh, right? Uh, um, okay, I want to be respectful of your time. I, I just appreciate it so much you taking the time uh, to do this. Absolutely. I know you, you, you do 200 dates a year uh, speaking. Brutal. Like, do you post those on your website? Oh, yeah, yeah. Where so nutritionfacts.org slash speaking dash dates. And you get, and it's in calendar form. You can search for your city. Um, you can okay. sign up right there, get tickets, or whatever. They're, yeah, 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 yeah. Go see Dr. Gregor. Do, yeah, yeah. Go to nutritionfacts.org forward slash speaking. You said uh, speaking dash dates. Speaking dash dates. Uh, he's hilarious. I mean, Ugh. his talks are are okay. awesome. They're they're uh, they'll blow your mind. A with nutritional science, and B, he's just an amazing speaker. Hilarious, just like so much personality. And I mean, so, you know, you do such a great job. And if the talk is sold out, <clears throat> what you do? Contact me through the website and say Chris sent you, and I'll get you in. Yeah, that's the VIP hookup right there. I love it, <laughs> Dr. Gregor. Thank you so much. This is really fun. Uh, again, folks, brand new book, How Not to Diet. Is it uh, officially a bestseller? Absolutely. Yeah, it New York premiered Times? at number two. And of course, I was well disappointed. Done. But still, that was pretty good. That's pretty dang good. Something yeah, yeah. to be happy about. But How Not to Diet, you can get it anywhere, bookstores, Amazon. Uh, and How or Not to Diet. Or your local public library for free. There you go. Um, and How Not to Die. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving a huge endorsement for both these books amazing they will blow your mind if you really want to see what the science the literature says about nutrition about healthy eating like your head will explode in the best way possible and again i just want to give you a heartfelt thanks because wow. the cool thing about um you know you to me is that i just told you what i did right mm -hmm. i had no science That's like crazy. there were no studies right, right. Yeah, yeah, amazing. there wasn't anything i mean the books i was reading at the back of the time back in that time were making claims, mm, right, right. right? But th there weren't references, there weren't right, citations. Right. It was like Ugh. nothing, right? And so I was just kind of like on a wing and a prayer, hoping mm. that like I hope this is right. right. And my instincts and intuition were telling me like this has got to be good for you, mm. right? Mm. But then you know, when I started blogging in 2010 and sharing my story, I realized like wait a second, maybe I'm wrong. Like mm. I don't even I know what I did. I obviously I'm alive and thriving and all that, but like I need to learn more and you know I don't know when Nutrition Facts started 2011 okay I found you probably around that time wow. you know pretty in the, or pretty early days and it was like all the light bulbs were going off and I got so excited to see like oh there is evidence it, it makes sense this is why what I did helped me and why what I did because you know in the back of your mind you're thinking Maybe I'm just a fluke. Maybe yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, lucky. Yeah, sure. you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right. And uh, I'm like, no, this this is why th what I did can help other people. Here's the evidence. So again, one more high five for that. Thank Woo! you. Whoops, we missed. Thank you so much. I mean, you've been a huge blessing in my life. You've helped me uh, reach more people. You've brought research to me that I've been to share, been able to share with my audience. Fantastic. And I uh, just appreciate being on the same team. So glad to help. Anything I do to help, let me know. Awesome. Sweet. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, please share this video. Check, get both of Dr. Gregor's books. Sign up for nutritionfacts.org, email newsletters. Like Everything he does, pay attention to it, follow it, do it. You, your life will be better. You'll be healthier for it. And uh, that's the best endorsement I can give right there. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.